What is the weirdest advice you have heard that is strangely effective? If you're really shy or struggle with holding conversations or being social just ask questions. This works in three ways is one. The other person will be doing most of the talking, two. They also leave the conversation with a positive feeling because most people enjoy talking about themselves and three. It gives the sense that someone is interested in him. Bonus positive feelings about your interaction I'm an extroverted introvert. I dislike social contacts but the nature of my job requires ongoing interaction and being an only child has always required me to make an effort or be on my own. This tactic usually works for me and people are always surprised when I say I'm actually super introverted. Do you understand, that if you try to endlessly stack bricks, no matter how perfect you do it, they will fall over? My boss told me this after I burned out. Just says that no matter how well you plan your work, too much is too much. My granddad lived to be 95. I asked him what the secret to a long happy life was. He told me to mind my own business. From my seven-year-old daughter, I still laugh about it today. If you're ever in an awkward situation with someone or need to just go away you could always pretend to choke on something. I don't know where this came from but it's funny and it works. You just run away to get a glass of water. Make them tell you no. It's great when you're not sure if you should apply for a job, go for a promotion or a raise, or do something you're afraid of. Don't be so worried about getting told no or failing, you'll surprise yourself. Sometimes people suck. It really made me stop and think about how some people just suck and the only thing I can change is how I let it affect me. I became a much less angrier person, I hardly have road rage anymore, and just generally happier. A wise man once told me, buy a plunger before you need a plunger. If you sit quietly while everyone else fucks up, you're going to win big. John Oliver. I've gotten multiple jobs and school opportunities by just doing my work and not being a loud moron. If you need to remember something, write it 3x or say it out loud 3x. Always weird when you repeat something verbally 3x, especially names. A co-worker told me that when someone has the hiccups you tell them, you're not a fish. The amount of times this has worked has convinced me she's a witch. I have texted her at least a half dozen times whenever it worked. At one point while I had the hiccups and asked a friend to tell me I'm not a fish. Worked. Fucking sorcery. If looking for something in a low light environment, try to use your peripheral vision. I read about it in an old World War II manual about aerial combat at night. It has something to do with how eyes work. It has helped me many times over the years. For finding stuff in a darkened room, or outside in a field at night, not aerial combat. Don't give excuses unless they ask for it. I.e. if you are late for work, just say that you are late. Not why you are late. Anger and remorse are shadow companions, with remorse always a step behind. I took control over my temper issues by reminding me of this one-liner. Hope this works for you, too. Two from elderly southern relatives. One. Something ain't nothing, taking five minutes to work out, clean, work on a big project, etc. Is better than zero minutes. We often think we've got to do two hours of rigorous work or it doesn't accomplish anything. Two. Time will pass either way, if you want to work to get better at something, accomplish a long-term goal, or change careers or credentials, don't look at the two to five years and think you'll be too old. If you're 24 and want to go to college, you'll be 28 in four years with or without a degree regardless of what you do in that time. It's only embarrassing if you're embarrassed. The older I get, the more I understand this one. Edit, you guys are awesome. Thank you for the awards and feedback fail quickly, as in, if your plan may not succeed, better to find out next week than next year. Help me quit a suffocating job and dig into my own business 10 out of 10. It isn't your job to always find a way to make it work. Sometimes you need to let it fail to expose the bigger issues. If you can't fight the fear, do it scared. Got me through a lot of anxiety. My mother always said go back to basics whenever I was struggling mentally. I disregarded it for years but now I live by it. I only utilize this way of living during desperate, survival, times, but it's amazing advice. Don't beat yourself up forever. Beat yourself up once then move on. Mr. Homer Simpson. If you want to buy something, wait 24 hours and if you still want to buy it afterwards then buy it. 
This has really cut my impulse buying down and has made saving money extremely easy. Don't pass a pig truck on the outside of a sharp curve. My dad, on the occasion of my earning my driver's license. 30 years later, I'm behind a pig truck on some fairly twisty, turny highway. It's going slow AF, so I want to pass. But there's a sharp right hand curve just ahead. Dad's voice, rip, pops, comes down from the heavens like Obi-Wan telling Luke to use the force. Except that it's that same advice. I hang back a few seconds, only to see a sheet of liquid pig feces wash out of the densely packed pig truck's trailer floor. It misses my car completely but totally coats the two cars that went around me and tried to pass the truck. Dad's voice, remember, the force will be with you. Always. When writing an email, leave the recipient field until last. People don't always remember what you say but how you make them feel. Stressed, upset, panic attack, ennui. Put an ice cube in your hand. Move it around your hand until it slowly melts. It takes about 5 minutes. Primary effect, the cold on your skin grabs your brain's attention. You stop thinking about what was stressing you out and feel present in the moment. Secondary effect, the cold cools your blood, which goes into your heart and slows down the beating. As your heartbeat slows to maintain your body heat, your lungs breathe more slowly as well. It forces you to breathe, which calms you down. After 5 minutes of this, you will feel much calmer, if slightly drippy. No one thinks about you as much as you do. Meaning we're all worried about people thinking about the tiniest embarrassing things we do, when no one really cares. It gave me freedom to take on more challenges and not worry about failure. I tell my daughter to add the word yet after anything about lacking something. I don't know how to play this game. Becomes, I don't know how to play this game yet. That sort of thing. It's meant to redirect negative self-admonishment into a drive to grow and learn. And apparently it's sinking in, because she will say something like, Ugh, I can't make it up this hill. While we're out bike riding and then catch me looking at her, give a big eye roll and go, dot yet. In the exact tone you think a teenage girl would use. Then she ends up sometimes just rage succeeding to prove the point, it's great. She's going to be at least three times better than me, low as that bar may be. Do jazz hands in front of wasps and they'll fly away. You'll look like an idiot, but it's working at it. English is not my first language, so don't be rude don't wave your hands like a maniac, I'm talking about calm jazz hands. I learned that they'll focus on your fingertips and get confused, so they'll leave you alone. Don't kick a hive and try it, it's working for a small amount of wasps. Also I'm from Europe, so I don't know for big ass murder wasps from other countries. And no it's not working for mosquitoes. Do not try any drug that will inspire you to suck dick in an alley for more. It's solid advice for young adults. Rinse your cereal bowl straight away. That stuff sets like concrete. This is one I came up with to explain my self-esteem. You can't sad your ugly away, I woke up one day after years of torment, a lot of which from myself, and realized that being upset about how I look won't make me any prettier, so I may as well just own my looks. I can fix what I can but being upset about it ain't gonna do shit, may as well love my fugly self. Loving myself when I felt no one else would, and being happy and enjoying life despite it all, it really is the greatest revenge I could come up with. When walking among other people, there's a trick to avoid the annoying little, who's gonna pass on what side dance, where both of you go left, then both go right and then you finally pass, pick a direction and aim your face towards your intended direction, like look to the left or right of them clearly turning your head in a single direction. This is a clear signal to people so there's no confusion as to which way you want to pass them. I haven't had that annoying dance since. My wife changed my world a while back when dealing with a bad attitude from my son. She simply asked, what do you think is going to come from this? I apply that to most things I do now. For all my ad dares or other who struggle with executive function, do chores while waiting. Have something in the oven, Let's see how much laundry you can fold before the timer goes off. Microwave, I bet you can empty the dishwasher in 90 seconds. On a phone call, pop in those earbuds and let's tidy while we talk. I get so hung up on waiting mode, and the novelty of trying to accomplish a small task during that interim feels a bit like a deadline pressure, which is basically the only thing that motivates me. Tricking my brain into a mini productive panic is startlingly effective. 
you know, sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage. Just literally 20 seconds of just embarrassing bravery. And I promise you, something great will come of it. Benjamin me, we bought a zoo. Put a small stool under your feet when pooping, to mimic the natural squatting position. Changed my life, literally. During the first week after my discovery I had a strong urge to tell all my family and friends about it, but had to restrain myself because of how weird that would sound. So instead I'm sharing this advice with you. To improve your posture, pretend that you are shooting lasers out of your nipples and trying to shoot people in the head. There was a guy the first met at a family-friendly pub once, he was busking and he had a straw sun hat and mismatched socks. He chatted to my family and came to learn I was deaf and wrote me a letter that says, sometimes it's better to be deaf, because the world isn't listening. And for some reason that's always stuck with me. Get someone to warm to you by asking them for a small favor, not asking to do something for them, but asking them to do something for you. I have no idea why this works, but it does. How to unclog your nose. Close your mouth and pinch your nose so you can't breath. Shake your head up and down until you need to breath. Remove your hand from your nose and breath, through your nose not your mouth. Been doing this for a while now and it's pretty effective. Even the people who love you can hold you back. It ain't being nasty, they just don't want to lose you or see you get hurt. They wanted the best for you without realizing their idea of what's best ain't necessarily that. Counterintuitive maybe, but it helped my anxiety immensely, in general, no one cares about you, what you're doing, or gives you a second thought once you're out of their sight. It really helped me to stop being self-conscious all the time in public. Never miss an opportunity to have a piss. Holding your breath for a prolonged time is extremely effective at getting rid of a boner. Instructions are clear, do not, I repeat do not hold your breath until you die, or you may end up getting your boner back. A trainer once told me don't ever stick your finger, or any other appendage, anywhere you wouldn't put your dick. I have worked in all kinds of heavy industry settings and still have all my fingers. My therapist said, yeah, doing the thing, will give you anxiety. So you throw that bitch over your shoulder and take her along for the ride. Other therapists I'd had always focused on making the anxiety go away and distracting myself from it. He was the first person to ever tell me it's okay to be anxious, it's okay if your coping strategies don't always work, and riding through it anyway even if you freak out later is brave as fuck. Someone wanting something for you more than you want it for yourself is a red flag. When someone tells you about their problem, just repeat what they said in your words. That person will like you more as a result. Works every time and everyone can do it. Sucking at something is the first step to being sorta good at something. Honestly, it's deflated the embarrassment of making mistakes when learning new things. It's okay to suck at something on your way to okayness. Under promise. Over perform. Don't expect a thank you. Edit. Absolutely blown away by the amount of upvotes. Everyone keep under promising and just do your best. Thanks again everyone. For a perfect high five look at the elbow of the other person. 100% of the time it'll be a spot on high five. Feeling sleepy? Turn your head back and look at the ceiling, sky for five seconds. Carrot, edit, to wake up a little bit. Also, seems to work the opposite way for some people, sorry. Wash your clothes with vinegar to remove smells. If you forget wet clothes in the washing machine for too long they'll smell like mildew. Washing them again doesn't really take the smell away, for as many times as you try. Wash them again with tilde 1 liter of white vinegar, no detergent, do not use balsamic vinegar or whatever, and somehow the end result won't smell to mildew nor vinegar, just like pure clean washed clothes. I expected the vinegar smell to remain but those clothes were a write-off on my book, so I tried anyway and they came out perfectly. Edit. I just grabbed a 2 liter bottle and poured a bit under half and it worked, but his other comment just a cup also works. I guess I was adventurous on an all or nothing, and poured a lot. Edit 2. OFC I tried washing him again, but the mildew smell would just not go away. Let's just say they sat forgotten for way too long wet in the machine. When you are really, really down, the rules of how one does things are out the window. Examples. Body image issues. Shower in the dark, can't manage to make yourself a sandwich. Eat sandwich component out of the fridge, dirty laundry everywhere.
Take off the laundry basket lid, can't talk on the phone. Make up phone persona and roleplay them. Include catchphrase. Going to bed makes you nervous. Sleep on the couch. Can't make up your mind about gifted clutter. Put in box, get back if you miss it, gift if not. Brains are really, really weird. Sometimes the smallest thing can be a barrier that is impossible to overcome. Remove barrier, get through that terrible week like a well-fed, clean-smelling human, build back from there. Failure is always an option the difference between science and messing around is writing it down. If nothing you do matters, all that matters is what you do. Blinking twice when reading info from textbooks to sort of mimic photographic memory. Works for me for some reason. Don't let what you can't do get in the way of what you can do. If you can't decide between two equally good options, flip a coin. If you're disappointed with your result, go with the losing side. Giving a woman a piece of cheese may gain her interest. Is it a destiny you want or is it a destiny that was picked out for you? It helped me figure out who I wanted to be as a person, and who I didn't want to be. Thank you Uncle Iroh. The best time to start was 10 years ago. The next best time to start is right now. On asking my parents how they had such a healthy marriage, we never put you first asterisk they didn't neglect us. They just knew to put each other and their relationship first if they were going to survive parenting six kids and make it out okay on the other side. Family time with them and my siblings is now always a highlight of my year because of it. People only hear what they see so no matter how smart or deep a statement is, people will judge it more by how the person presents themselves than how they articulate. Not a hard and fast rule, but it seems to work. It's probably why pop stars with average musical outputs do much better commercially than weird-looking musicians with a lot of talent. Sniffing rubbing alcohol to quell nausea. I thought it was dumb but it actually works pretty well. Our dog was playing with, i.e. destroying, my mum's shoes, so her sister said that she needed to yell at the shoe. Everyone laughed of course, but the next time our dog was busy with my mum's shoes, my aunt walked up, grabbed the shoe and yelled at it. Well, no more shoes were destroyed or even touched by our dog. Be gentle with her in the morning, son, random guy on Bourbon Street with a mariachi hat during my bachelor party. I once fixed a laptop by following the YouTube advice that included sticking a penny above the CPU and pointing a hairdryer at it for 30 meters. Did not expect that to work out at all but the laptop was dead and old so gave it a go. Drumming your fingers on the back of your head, just behind your ears, works surprisingly well for quieting tinnitus. It only works temporarily but still offers some relief. Things change. It doesn't mean they get better. You got to make things better. You can't just keep talking and hope for the best. Gregory House, House MD, S6E2, Broken Part 2. Help me reach out to get therapy and medication for my problems. Don't say sorry, say thank you. That doesn't mean never apologize when you fuck up. It means don't apologize if you didn't. Words are powerful and if you apologize you give the other person a reason to think you did something wrong. For example don't say, sorry for taking up your time. Instead say, thank you for your time. If you like the video, please consider subscribing and liking. Any feedback in the comments would be greatly appreciated so that we can make these videos even better. Thanks for watching Upvote Stories.